Welcome, everyone. This is not part of your scene, propaganda podcast, whatever you want to call it. This is another previews episode. Today, we are going to preview the DC Comics coming out in June. This is the April previews I'm on. It has Event Leviathan on the cover uh, and Superman Year One by Frank Miller on the cover if you flip it over. So you can go ahead and go... Uh, you know, read this with me, or you could just have like a listening kind of you know, previews magazine if you want. I always like to recommend the, the younger viewers to go grab this Marvel and DC previews. They are free at the comic book shop. I know you can't afford to get every comic book and you're a collector, but if you were like me, you still want to know what was going on. And this is a great way to sort of keep your thumb on what's happening in comic books, even if you can't you know, spend fifty, a hundred dollars a week, um, and then when you can, by the way, spend fifty, hundred dollars a week, you need to start. You start scaling back because you're like, I can't spend fifty, hundred dollars, fifty or hundred dollars a week on comic books. Every now and then, you get past that fifty mark, and you're like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta take stuff off my pool list. But anyway, uh, this is uh, we're gonna get into the previews. Uh, last week, I posted the Marvel previews. This week, of course, I've already told you, you're getting DC previews. We're going to talk about that. And then the next two Mondays, I'll have the big indies. So that is things like Dark Horse and Image and, and uh, I mean, those are the biggest indies, right? Aftershock, things like that. And then the week after, you know, if you really want to get into it, you really want to get into the weeds, we get into the back pages, the green pages uh, of previews where we do the, the smaller indie stuff. Um, there's actually some, some stuff that I would say leans towards bigger indie, like Archie and stuff, but we'll, we'll talk about that too. So every week, uh, normally on Monday, I know I, I, I released the Marvel one on Saturday, but that's just like podcast, you know, m- monthly amounts I can put out. So I decided just to release it on Saturday uh, so I can get that in on March. And, um, but for the most part, every Monday you come in, uh, we're going to talk about pre- one of the previews. We'll do that four times a month every Monday, and uh, and and we'll just talk comic books. So this is uh, one where you know it just allows us to talk about news and what's going on in each of these sort of comic worlds. So so hopefully you read along with me. Um, again, you can find me at not part of your scene on Instagram and on Twitter uh, at Chris Sarda is my personal Twitter. I have one, um, I do have a, a not part of your scene Twitter for, uh, you, Twitter, uh, that's at endpoise underscore reviews, but, uh, I don't really use it. I just sort of throw articles on it. Um, you know, follow what I, what I can. It couldn't fit not part of your scene on, on Twitter. So I got to figure out what I'm doing with that account. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, sometimes these preview shows can go long. I try to keep them around 40 minutes or so, but we're going to do our best. So I am starting on, uh, you know, from the cover of Superman Year One. And uh, we'll get into that. We don't have to get into Superman Year One, too, but it doesn't grab me. So for DC, a lot of what's been grabbing me, and I'm trying to pull myself away from Batman because there's just so much Batman, but a lot of what's grabbing me is is who's writing the books. Um, that's interesting. That has uh, begun to interest me a little bit more. So, and uh, and part of that reason is is that DC is like shoving a lot of Batman down your throat. In fact, we're gonna do a little Batman count, even if when you go on page one you see Batman right away. Uh, but I, I think DC is relying too much on a single character. Um, so let's let's count. Let's talk about it as we go. But I can tell you that I'm uh, grabbing certain artists and and writers now in DC, and that that's what my big focus is. So DC's right now is going to start a a new a big event. I'm sure it's groundbreaking, and it'll change the DC universe forever, like every event does. This one's event Leviathan, and um, to be honest, I'm surprised it took them that long to. Uh, have an event that uh, Brian Michael Bendis is going to really run. We've been knee deep in Tom King's um, Heroes in Crisis you know, as a big event. 
And then, you know, Doomsday Clock would be a big event if, if it was shipping on time, of course. But, um, you know, they're finally giving Brian Michael Bendis a, a huge event. And the reason I point out Brian Michael Bendis and Tom King is because they're signed to exclusive deals at DC. And they're sort of like, you know, big writers that um, that DC is going to wield the way they, they want to. And part of part of making them exclusive typically means that they're going to run some of the huge events and stuff. So, um, so here we are, uh, event Leviathan. I'm, you know, maybe this will grab me. I hadn't heard of it actually until this previews where like war of the realms I've been hearing a lot about and heroes in crisis. If you follow Tom King, you know, you're going to get some, some weirdo stuff going on there. So the marketing was a little bit better. This is the first I'm hearing about event Leviathan. They might, they might turn up the marketing, but Hey, there's no big event that doesn't have Batman at the center, right? And, and well, there he is, Batman. One Batman. Um, if we flip the page, there's a spotlighting. They're spotlighting some Superman Year One. I think that this is this is important from the perspective that Frank Miller is writing it, and John Ramada Sr. is doing the art. Um, Ramita, sorry. But I don't know. I don't know how interested I am in this. I think you sort of got to be a Superman fan to really like this. And and Frank Miller's sort of soured me a little bit. So this is something I've sort of avoided Superman. Just when like an artist I like does a cover or something, I'll pick it up. Like Jeff DeCall recently did a B cover. But Superman hasn't done anything to really grab me lately. And and I'm not sure that this is going to change anything. But it's there, and if you're a Superman fan, there you go. If I were to get back into Superman, I would probably go back and read the um, the All-Star Superman run that keeps getting recommended to me, which I may do eventually anyway, just just, cause, just for the point of it, you know? Um, the new, uh, another new thing. This one sort of was cool, you know? Uh, I'm just a little bit, if we jump on to page four, it's Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. It's a trade paper black, ba- trade paper back. Um, I'm just a little, you know, over Harley Quinn. I mean, if it's not Batman, it's Harley Quinn with DC, right? So they, they're putting a lot of, a lot of, uh, time and effort, uh, pushing certain characters and, and I'm just getting a little bit tired of it. Marvel seems to, to be able to spread it down a little more. There's no real Batman at Marvel, you know, there's a bunch of characters that are pretty important that gain popularity because of the movies, especially, but there's no like we got to put everything behind a character or two like like DC's been doing. Superman of Smallville. This looks a little too kiddy for me. I'd even read the um, the solicit here. And then we're gonna jump right into. So DC sort of does it interesting. They just do it in alphabet after the spotlight. They just do it in alphabetical order. So we'll get to talk about the Batman world and the Superman world and whatever other you know, whatever other sub books, um, just all out of order. So to start off, we have, um, action comics, 1012. That's getting so fun to say. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis is still writing it. I really like Shimon Kudransky. Uh, I've always enjoyed his work. It's just, you know, a little difficult to buy everything. I, I, I can't remember what he draws in Marvel. I think it is, uh, I think it's Punisher and he does a great job there. So, um, so he's joining, uh, Brian Michael Bendis. I think this will be his first book. And this is, uh, an, uh, an event Leviathan tie-in. So if you're reading event Leviathan, you probably pick up this book. I, you know, I want to get into Superman, but do I need more books? No, but if, Le- if event Leviathan pulls me in, then I'm going to read it. Right. Uh, Adventures of the Super Sons doesn't really interest me. The idea doesn't interest me, but I do like Peter J. Tomasi, of course, who's also on Detective Comics. Um, if you flip the page to page eight, they are not separating their Vertigo stuff. This is uh, American Carnage number eight, and this has been one of my favorite books. And Brian Hill's becoming one of my favorite authors. Later on, when we get to Batman, I'll probably talk a little bit about Batman and the Outsiders, hopefully. Uh, but American Carnage is not a superhero book. It's a crime book. It's a sort of has a race um, element to it. I mean, it definitely does. It's a 
it's a black undercover agent that passes as white that is infiltrating um, a racist organization in in fact so I'm not I didn't read this solicit because I'm only on issue five or six right so the solicit is is a few issues out but I just can't recommend this book enough this is one of my favorite books of 2018 and it's sort of one been one of my favorite books I guess three issues have come out this year of 2019 so if you can get that trade when that trade comes out go pick it up uh, continue to read it I really recommend American Carnage I wish more people were reading it so I had someone to talk to about it so uh, over on page nine we're gonna jump from you know crime and vertigo to Aquaman and so I mean what is this, three in a row, four in a row, where I like the writer? So Aquaman, DC's been getting uh, good writers behind their books. And Kelly, Duse, Kelly Sue DeConnick is one of them. I know she's not for everyone. But I've just really, really enjoyed the book so far. I've enjoyed the art. Uh, I think um, Victor Bogdanovich and Jonathan Glapian, I think that they're new. I don't think that they were doing the art for the... Uh, for Aquaman up to the point that I'm at. I think I'm at like 46 or so. Uh, but I've enjoyed the art a lot. Kelly or Kelly Sue has done a, a good job with keeping things sort of mysterious after the Drowned Earths uh, saga. You know, getting to put her stamp on a Aquaman in that... It's, you know, it's a sort of... Where he is right now, it's a sort of trope where, you know, he's lost his... His... Uh, his memory, he doesn't know who he is and stuff, but the book is actually really good and you're sort of, she's sort of able to get to the sort of heart of what Aquaman is. And so I've enjoyed that and I've really enjoyed the art. So it's been a promising run, these, you know, first three or four issues that I've read. And on this cover, again, I'm not going to read that solicit, but I can see Mara's on the cover. And the variant cover uh, by Joshua Middleton looks really cool, you know, uh, having the ocean and the sky big and a, and a, and a tiny Aquaman in there. So I really like that cover. So I'll definitely be getting the B cover. Uh, not to say this Robson Rocha and Danny Meeky cover, the regular A cover isn't cool looking either. Uh, let's get to page 10, Batgirl 36, uh, by Marguerite Scott. So I've heard good things. I haven't read really any Batgirl. Joshua Middleton, Middleton's on the B cover. I do like Joshua Middleton's covers. Sometimes I pick those up. Uh, just as cover buys, but I, I haven't read Batgirl, um, the Talking Comics podcast, there's a couple people there that really enjoy it, so it's one that I always get my eye on that, you know, if I run out of things to read, maybe I'll grab a trade or something, but I've left that alone. If you listen, if you read Batgirl, um, I'd really like to hear from you if it's really that good. I just, I don't know that I need more Bat books and I'm reading Catwoman already, so maybe if I drop Catwoman, I'll give a, I'll give a, an arc to Batgirl. Or so. Batman Beyond. I, I'm a little confused about Batman Beyond, to be honest. The, the cartoons that I've uh, watched back in the day were good. I just don't really understand if this is a alternate reality or if this is the future or, or I don't know. But, um, I mean, you got to give them credit for covers, though, right? The, the covers always are, have been pretty good. Oh, and then on page 12, the gift that keeps on giving, the... Ever controversial Batman written by Tom King. We're we're heading to the you know the last quarter of his run on Tom King uh, or on Batman. So we're at seventy two and seventy three. This is a book that comes out every every two weeks with you know Detective Comics coming out the other two weeks in the month. And I for one have really enjoyed it. I'm a little tired of the nightmare. Uh arc that we're in the middle of right now but by the time 72 and 73 come out we'll be well in uh, a new arc called the fall and fallen i think it has something to do with vain there's some desert i'm not reading the uh solicits on this because i do buy it the variant cover by michael golden looks cool but you almost wish you can get this david finch cover in a you know in a no logo form because that david finch cover is even cooler but they're both pretty cool, to be honest. And then uh, on Batman 73, Ben Oliver's doing that variant cover, and that's beautiful. Actually, again, both the covers are beautiful. Uh, Mikhail Janine is doing the A cover, and it's a 
like sort of in a desert setting with Batman having Batman and tied up. So looks looks sweaty. Um, geez, how many Batmans was that, guys? Let me see. Event one. I'm just flipping through real quick. Harley doesn't count. One. So not that many. Batgirl doesn't count. Batman Beyond doesn't count. One. And then his own title. So, so far we're at three. But then there's Batman and the Outsiders, number two. And over the last few months, because of American Carnage, I've become somewhat of a Brian Hill fan. And I skipped his his run on Detective Comics. At that time, I just wasn't buying Detective Comics. I started like at like 988 or 990 just so I can see where the the team was going as they hit 1000 you know Detective Comics 1000 being a terribly boring issue uh but then as I became you know as I started liking Brian Hill's work uh I realized that he had written Detective Comics a few issues before that so I want to go get that arc and that might get me into this Batman and the Outsiders book uh, I don't know Dexter Soy, and I, I don't know the, the cover artist either. But Batman leading a team, I guess that's interesting. It's just, the real question is, isn't whether Brian Hill's going to do a good job or that I like Brian Hill or, or whatnot. The the real question is, do I have too much Batman? That's the real question. Because we're not done yet. He's going to be in other books. Don't worry. Uh, Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if that's your thing, you should probably get that. Uh, for me, this is pretty easy to not buy uh the batman who laughs i've been reading the hell out of that scott snyder and jock uh a jenny frizen cover is the uh variant cover you can't read this solicit of course because that's what i'm reading or I, i'll know what's going on that jenny frizen cover is really cool though so she's done uh she's done some incredible uh variant cover covers and and b covers and stuff like that so she's a great cover artist that is Someone you should always look at. You know that she's going to do a good job. Uh, on page 17, I'm curious if people are actually reading these Sandman Universe books. I, I, I've been collecting them. In the back of my head, I think um, that I'm going to sell the individual issues whenever they put out the hardcovers. So we're on Books of Magic number 9. And uh, if there's, you know, if there's one that people are reading, uh, the Books of Magic back in the day had a had a big, big following. So if there's one people are reading, and this is, you know, probably in the top two or three of them, uh, I can't really comment on what's happening because I only read the first two issues. Uh, so here's a Bat book I'm reading that doesn't involve Batman. It's Catwoman, number 12. Uh, I think I, you know, I think I moved, I think I might move on from this, try Batgirl. We'll see how that works out, but I really like Joelle Jones, and I really, really liked when she was drawing the book. Not that Fernando Blanco is is a bad artist, but just Joelle Jones as a whole is a uh, great artist and writer. I've tried to drop Catwoman, but it's been good enough to stay around, so it's been one of those things. So, uh, how many Batmans are we at? We're at three, four, five, six... And now in Deceased, we have Batman. It looks like just Batman versus Zombies or, or the Justice League versus Zombies. So that's like seven. Uh, Deathstroke, there hasn't been, you know, Batman's been in and out of that. I think Deathstroke's been one of the best, you know, one of the best B-cover comics going out. But I, they haven't got me to actually buy an issue yet, even though Christopher Priest is one of the better writers around as far as consistency. Uh, but... Haven't got me to actually buy it. I, I do see a lot of like comic YouTubers and stuff talking about, you know, showing that cover because it's hard. If the cover's so good, then, uh, you know, makes people grab it. And I've done that with other stuff. I haven't quite done it with Deathstroke, so I've been lucky in that. Wonder Comics, I'm not reading Naomi or, or Dial H for Hero. They, they have number four uh, out here. I know some people have been excited for them. I, I don't know if they're like a, I really don't understand what's going on. Are they a kid's book? You know, so I haven't been super into it. Uh, Detective Comics number 1005 and 1006. So spoiler alert at the end of, uh, this is, there's no spoilers really in Detective Comics 1000, but they introduce Arkham Knight and Arkham Knight was a villain in the video games. And he hasn't really been in the comics or hasn't been in the comics at all. So 
I think so. Basically, the next few issues are going to be all Arkham Knight based, and and they probably got me on Detective Comics. I was going to stop at a thousand, but to be honest, I want to see how they work Arkham Knight in. So, spoiler alert for the video games: is that it's Jason Todd in the video games, uh, the Robin that was killed, and he's back now, uh, red hooding it and stuff. But uh, so he can't. I don't think he can be Arkham Knight in the comics. So I'm curious what they do with him and how they work him into the uh, into the the continuity of of the general DC universe and, and Batman in general. So I think that puts us at nine or ten Batmans. And by the way, both these B covers are must buys. Uh, one is by Dan Quintana, who I'm not sure I know, and Stepan Sajic is the other one with Arkham Knight on it. So must buys. Okay, friends, we are now on page 24, where another Sandman book. It's really weird that the uh, alphabetical order thing. You'd, you'd think I would just be able to talk about Sandman universe books all at once, but it's in alphabetical order. So The Dreaming, this is pretty much the main book. I got through, I think, issue five and then just kept col- collecting it, not reading them. Uh, same reason. I would like to probably sell them and buy the hardcover. Um, it's just the kind of book I'd rather have in hardcover, you know? And um, with that said, I don't have all the absolutes for regular Sandman by Neil Gaiman, so I should probably look into that first, you know? But anyway, you know, there's a, a YOLO, sort of FOMO, whatever other stupid acronym the kids are saying. So, fear of missing out, and when I'm at the comic store, you only live once. So, all that silly stuff that's, you know, still half true. Female Furies number five by Cecil Castellucci. I thought someone else was writing that, to be honest, but uh, number one was good. I have number two sitting up there. I hope it has the same weird comic, you know, hashtag me too sort of feel to it with uh, Big Barda and uh, Granny Goodness. Just really wacky. So it was just a really wacky book. It's hard to explain, you know, but it does have a, a strong. Uh, it does have a strong feminist uh, twist to it, which is I think is pretty cool. It is not part of the continuity, which you'll know right away if you read it. So, And Flash is still on a two-time per, per month uh, release schedule. It, it feels like maybe no one's reading it, but then if it's still two times per month, obviously someone's reading it. I really enjoyed Joshua Williamson writing the, the Batman for Flash crossover. He did He wrote... Batman 2 it might be why I'm a little bit sick of the Nightmare arc because we had two issues of Batman written by Josh Williamson and then they went back into the Nightmare arc. So it might be why I'm a little tired of the Nightmare arc because it feels like it's gone on, but we actually had that two-week break or a two-issue break. I didn't continue to read The Flash. Uh, maybe I should. I just don't know that much about that. My wife literally knows more about The Flash than I do because she watched the TV show. Uh, I just vaguely know some of the enemies. And I just always have thought his rogues gallery was sort of silly. Hop over to 28. Uh, we have uh, Green Lantern number 8. So Grant Morrison's going to do a little bit of a throwback with the Green Arrow there. Uh, I'm curious on his take on it because those Green Lantern, Green Arrow books from the 70s have a, a sort of, you know, are important in comic book history, them arguing over leftist and safe politics and whatnot. So I really like to see what Grant Morrison does with it. Uh, his, Green Lantern with Grant, Grant Morrison has been okay so far. Weird just like Grant Morrison normally is, but you'd like him to pull it together a little bit. Uh, I don't read Harley Quinn number 62, but obviously somebody does. I, I don't hate the character, but I guess we've turned her into sort of an anti-hero. Maybe she's cool. Maybe she's not. I don't know. Uh, Hawkman number 13. I'm told that Hawkman's a cool character. Uh, he, just being mostly a Marvel guy, I can't pretend like I, I know who he is. I know who Hawkman is through my readings of you know Justice League every now and then when I get in an arc or something. But here he is, and he's on the 13th issue, so they must be doing pretty good. Uh, Inyuk Lee is doing the variant cover, and... Uh, Inyuk Lee always does good covers, and this one's no different. It looks pretty cool for the B cover. And on page 31, we'll get to high level number five. I am reading this. 
It is a you know pretty cool world building so far. I'm only at issue number two. Um, I would say at this point, like for a cyberpunk story, it's it's pretty typical. I've enjoyed what I read, but I haven't. After two issues only, and it's only been two issues, I'd probably give it through issue five. Right? Um, we're sort of at the nothing special mode. But there are a lot of mysteries that can make itself set it apart, especially when they get to high level. So I I have liked it. I will continue to buy it. Uh, I'm waiting for it to, you know, knock something out of the park. Uh, I And page number 32, we're back to the Sandman universe. House of Whispers, number 10 will be out. This is a book I have been, I read number one and liked it. And I, and I don't think I bought every issue. This is probably the one that most interested me, House of Whispers. And if I decide to read these single issues that I have or not wait for hardcovers, it'll it'll probably be this one and then the main title, The Dreaming. Um, I did I, I really enjoyed it. It had a real like Louisiana Southern feel uh, mixed into the Sandman universe, which was mostly missing from the old Sandman's uh, weirdness, you know. So a lot of voodoo stuff, as far as I can tell, was going to happen in there. And that cover is freaking me out because there's two girls eating and then there's a really weird dude and a spider. So it's weird. And that's what I like, right? Uh, on page 33 is a book I have definitely been reading. I think James Tinian the Fourth is one of our, our very underrated writers. Um, I know he writes regular Justice League or was writing it. Or just, I guess Scott Snyder. Oh no, he's right. He writes, writes twenty six. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but I've I've really enjoyed it because it's sort of a side story. I'm not going to get real caught up with the main title. You know, the fears when you get caught up with a main title is that you're going to have to do all the crossovers. You're going to be too invested. So Justice League Dark has been really good. Their big crossover with Wonder Woman was actually awesome. Uh, I I really do recommend the Witching Hour, and and so far. And I can tell just from this cover, so far, it's really just felt like one big story. Like, that magic is weird and it's not all there. They're going to mix in with Dr. Fate and and some real magic-y uh, Wonder Woman history. So, I mean, it gets an A+. It gets an A plus for me. It's just been a really good sort of dark, magic-based superhero book. You'd think I would have been all about Dr. Strange if I love Justice League Dark so much. But, you know, I've skipped Dr. Strange, even though if you... Listen to the you know last week's podcast. The Galactus Doctor Strange thing sort of intrigues me. Um, I have not been reading Justice League, despite how much I like uh, Scott Snyder and James Tinian, who's writing number twenty six. I haven't been reading it. Uh, I really I'm intrigued by it because it's sort of like Superman on high, right? You're you always wonder if you're not a Superman fan how they can you know write good Superman stories. Because he's just too powerful. But then what if you add Green Lantern and Wonder Woman and the fastest guy alive? You know, how is Gorilla Grodd... How are these people even matter, right? How do these... Justice League should be able to smash them all pretty easily. With maybe the exception of a super powerful Green Lantern or something. Cheetah shouldn't be shit. But uh, there they are. And I don't get caught up in it. I, I do have a few issues of Justice League. Um, but I just haven't got caught up in it. I just buy enough stuff, and even though it's cool and it's all the big heroes, it's you know it's something I leave alone. So if there was a Justice League I was going to start reading, it would be by another underrated author, I feel, in the world of comics that people don't talk enough about, Dan Abnett, who um, was, what is he writing? Oh, he was writing The Silencer. I think he still might be. But uh, Justice League Odyssey number 10, it has a more cosmic feel to it. Dan Abnett is just really underrated, a really underrated comic book writer. And uh, and I would maybe pick that up, but we'll see. I don't really get what the difference is. Is it cosmic Justice League? I'm not sure. So um, on page 37, it's another Sandman Universe book. I'm really curious about how these are doing because there's a lot of them, and I don't feel like I feel like people stop talking about it as much. Lucifer is is one that I'm probably missing the most issues from, but I, I've started picking it up, and I've heard it was pretty cool too. So, you know, dark, I'm dark and metal and, you know, heavy metal, so Lucifer should be right in my wheelhouse. I don't know. I, Kelly Jones, I know her art, so I know that's going to be pretty good. 
but I don't know Dan Waters very well. And if I do, I can't remember what he's written. So on page 38, I am reading Martian Manhunter. I have enjoyed it immensely. Uh, I think I am now a huge Steve Orlando fan. And uh, I really like the art by Riley Rossmo. I don't know if I've seen it before. It has that sort of a wacky cartoony look. I think Dylan Burnett, they don't, they don't draw the same, but it's the same idea where it's um, cartoony without looking anime at all. I think that's the best way to describe Dylan Burnett and to describe the art that Riley Rossmo does in Martian Manhunter. A cartoony feel, so more on the cartoony side, but doesn't feel like anime at all. Variant cover is going to be by Joshua Middleton. It's not pictured here, but it's Joshua Middleton and it's Martian Manhunter, so I'm sure he'll think up some some cool things. On page 39, we're at Naomi number six. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis is writing this. The people who have been reading Naomi seem to like it. Um, I read the little previews that were you know be showing up on the back of my on the back of my DC comics over the last month or so. Uh, I'll be honest, it, it didn't interest me that much. It seemed like she was like a normal person in the world of DC. And, you know, it's like how, how it affects normal people. But now it looks like she's like a superhero. But um, I'm just not that interested. Uh, page 40, if you're reading along. Nightwing number 61, Jan Jurgen, Dan Jurgens is writing it. To be honest, I've been reading these since number 50, and I'm not sure that Dan Jurgens was the writer the whole way. I, I can't remember who was writing it. Um, I've liked it. It's a, sort of a new twist on Nightwing with his memory being lost after being shot, spoiler alert, like 15 issues of Batman ago. And, and it looks like they're continuing that sort of a shtick. I said earlier that if they continue this and this is the real way that Dick Grayson is now, then I would love that. And... I do love the idea still. I've gone back and forth on its uh, on how it's been uh, implemented, but I still like it, and I've still been buying it. It's one of those things where I stopped one month from buying it, and then the next month it interests me, so I bought the two issues, and and I don't know if that's a waste of money. It is It is one of the comics on my edge of, of cutting off the pool list, but, you know, there it is. Pearl number 10 by Brian Michael Bendis. I have no idea what this is about or whether it's good. I don't hear anyone talking about it. It's a Jinx. It's from a, the Jinx World imprint. So if you are really into Pearl by Brian Michael Bendis, art and cover by Michael Gatos, if you're really into it, let me know why I should be reading it. But I don't see it on the shelf. I don't see people talking about it really. Um, but it is, it has got to issue 10, so maybe it's popular somewhere. Uh, Red Hood Outlaw number 35, Scott Labdell. So this is the reason that, I mean, unless something really crazy is going on, this is the reason that the Arkham Knight, which is going to start appearing in the pages of Detective Comics, cannot be Jason Todd because this is Jason Todd. Of course, this also says that he'll be in Gotham, so maybe they're screwing around with us. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, number 99. Well, I don't read this. Congratulations to them to be at 99, though. Shazam, number 7. So Shazam's not someone I've really ever been into. Uh, I do like Jeff Johns. I don't know the artist, Dale Eaglesham. Uh, you know, maybe the movie's going to be so good that it makes me want to, like, sort of dive into the character. Maybe that's the whole point uh, of them being already on number 7 by now, but... Never been super into it. I, I vaguely remember the cartoon, and every now and then he'll appear in a comic or something. I mean, he's cool. I'm just not. I'm just not buying it. Uh, something I am buying from the New Age of Heroes is uh, the Silencer. We're at number 18. Uh, I really like the New Age of Heroes from what I've read. The Silencer is what I've been reading consistently over the last five six months. Dan Abnett has either been writing it or been you know behind the scripting. And I think he's done a great job. You know, I don't really understand what's going on in the new world of heroes, whether it's a different world or how related it is to metal. Should have I should have read metal more closely as back when I wasn't reading DC or I was avoiding superhero books. Uh, as much as as probably my height of avoiding superhero books was when metal came out. So it is what it is. I should probably just I want to buy those hardcovers just because it's been so influential lately. 
Uh, next up is on page 46 and 47, we have Supergirl and Superman. So the other Superman uh, comic, this one's written by Brian Michael Bendis. I forget who's writing action comics. Is he writing both of them? That's too much writing for you. Oh, he's writing action comics too. So um, this Superman is not crossing over to Event Leviathan. So that's pretty cool that he's not taking up everything. He can. He's continuing his little run or his uh, its own arc there. Uh, let's see. Teen Titans number 31. You know, they, they're getting more and more popular. The books, the, the cartoon. I've, I've tried to watch it. I've enjoyed it, what I've watched. But I really need to sit down and, and put it on my list of things I'm actually watching. Of course, watching Titans on DC Universe. It was, it was in the, you know, good to very good range. Definitely not, you know, classic that you must watch. So getting into Teen Titans would be... Not crazy. I, I did plan on reading Titans, which now I'm wondering. It appears it was canceled because it's not out there. So I was reading Titans, so it looks like it was canceled because it crossed over a little bit into the Drowned Earth series. So now I'm curious. I got to go look into whether ti that Titans alone was canceled. Um, I did like the two issues I bought, but uh, next up is the Terrifics. This one is by Gene Luen Yang. Um, this is also the New Age of Heroes. Uh, I've heard good and bad things about the Terrifics. This is one of those, to be honest, I don't think the New Age of Heroes has, has much longer uh, to go. Damage is done. Pretty much they're all done except for Silencer and the Terrifics, I believe, um, as far as those imprints. And, and I've liked them, and I want them to be around. But at the same time, I know that I can probably collect these full runs in three or four years in the dollar bins. Um, and, and I don't think that there's classics or anything like that. So I got my eye out for these. I, I have enjoyed them enough, but it's going to be something I think like, you know, the way I collect the 2099 series now, 20 years later is when I see them in dollar bins, I'll grab them. But I don't know that, I don't know that they have real legs or, or real constant life. You know, it's too bad. I hate to say that. Um, if you hear me say that, you should probably be like, don't do that, man. That means we're always going to get Batman. Cause you, you know, I'm buying a ton of Batman, but it is what it is. Uh, on page 50, I'm not looking, I'm not reading this, um, solicit Wildstorm number 24. This is where it's ending. It is a Warren Ellis book writing, uh, you know, old school Wildstorm comics or Wildstorm comics. Um, this is definitely a hardcover buy for me. I will read it in the future, buy it in hardcover in the future. I, I've read, I've, you know, I'm a reader of Warren Ellis's weekly newsletter, and I've heard him talk a lot about, like, some of the experimental ways that he's writing and, and, uh, and nine panel pages and all that kind of stuff. So very excited for it. It's just something I'm going to read in the future. And this is the last issue. It went for 24. So, so very cool. Uh, Wonder Twins, Wonder Comics. You, now you know why they call it Wonder Comics. I don't know Mark Russell or Stephen Byrne or Stephen Byrne. Um, I've never really liked the Wonder Twins, so this one's an easy one for me to skip. Uh, Wonder Woman that is on the same schedule as Flash and Batman. They're at number seventy-two and seventy-three. Is Justice League on the same? No, they they did restart Justice League. Um, on the uh, same sort of, they don't not calling it Rebirth anymore, but that's essentially what it is. Uh, Jenny Frizen covers for both issues of Wonder Woman. Both of them look cool, especially the uh, B cover for number 73. Uh, I have not been reading it, even though I'm a big G. Willow Wilson fan who's writing number 72. And if Steve Orlando's taken it over in 73, I may, I may pick it up. Wow. Hmm. Well, Steve Orlando's the guest writer on it, so... Maybe not. I become a Steve Orlando fan. So, and then Young Justice number six, not reading that. So that is the previews for that is the DC previews. Hopefully you were flipping through it with me or you're just a more of a listening type and you're like, well, I'm going to listen to Chris talk about the DC previews. If you like collected editions, um, you know, I only got through half the book. So pretty much anything that should be collected is, is being collected in either hardcover or trade paperback. That's something that you can flip through. Um, you know, nothing's really catching my eye. The Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo Omnibus, that seems pretty cool if you like that group. 
um, that's coming out in hardcover. It's just going to cost you 125 bucks. So I'd, I'd say figure out a different way. A lot of those Sandman universe books are coming out in trade. Uh, I don't see them in hardcover yet. That's what I'm waiting for, or maybe even wait for absolute editions. Crisis on Infinite Earths box set. So all that kind of stuff, the, you know, everything gets collected. They, they sell you the same story again, basically saving you the price of one comic book. So if you're into that or you want to buy it new, you know, that's your prerogative. I do this too. Um, you know, trade paperbacks, I would say, is if you're going to go support your local comic shop, of course, when you're buying single issues and whatnot and, and hang out with them. But trade paperbacks are just so much cheaper and hard covers on Amazon. Um, I know, listen, I want to support my local comic book, you know, shop too. In fact, I go to multiple and I, and I spend a ton of money there. So no one could tell me that I don't do that. But the truth is, is that dropping 150 bucks on this, why the last man omnibus, I mean, you should probably just buy it on Amazon or wait a little bit and buy it on Amazon where it'll be a lot cheaper. Uh, Mr. Miracle hardcovers coming out. I might sell my single issues in order to get that in hardcover. Um, and then a whole bunch of statues, man. The statues are really fun to, to look at. I just don't have anywhere to put them, and I'd rather spend my money on comics. But there's some cool-ass. There's a the Batman Who Laughs Cowl. And even though I haven't read Dark Knight's Metal, you know, my brain is deeply into comics, so I know who the Red Death is. That statue looks pretty cool, too. Um, uh, another Batman Black and White is out. So... All kinds of cool stuff. If you're a big DC fan, you, I mean, if you're a DC fan, you're probably a bigger fan than me. So I just enjoy DC. I, I stick my toe in. Uh, you know, they just get a lot of good writers, so that's what really brings me in. But uh, if you're a Superman fan, I'm sure you have something to say how lightly I, I take, you know, Superman. If you're a Batman fan, I'm buying it too, but, geez, I'm just getting a little bit tired of it. Uh, I'm going to stick through the Tom King thing for sure, but I'll see what else I do with Batman. I'm slowly switching into the indies. I think you'll find me a lot more excited too about when we do the, the indie previews, but I do want to do the big two. I want to talk Marvel. I want to talk DC. I want to hear what you're buying. So make sure you find me, uh, at Chris Sarda on Twitter. If you want to see individual comic reviews, I do the little one minute videos on, at not part of your scene on Instagram. And I just want to thank you again for listening, for interacting, and, and just talking comics with me. You guys have a great day.